Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life Podcast. My name is Jessica. I'm the creator of Bahati Life and Queen Bee Homestead Co. And astrology, spiritual alignment, and advocating for trusting your intuition are just a few of my many passions. Today, we'll be gathered around our virtual bonfire and talking about the stars, more specifically, what's happening in the stars and how their movement is impacting us today. We'll do this first by breaking down the current transits one by one, and then I'll share the best way to move and use these transits to help maximize all of what they are so generously giving. Now, before I dive into the astrological transits, I always like to start off with a moment of inspiration and create the door that you can open to allow reflection and a pause to kind of enter into your space. Today's reflection is going to come from a post that it was that I saw either earlier this week or late last week. I can't remember because time flies when you're having fun and it was just July 4th weekend and I was definitely having fun. Shout out to the Keys and Key West for that. Either way, there was this post that was trending. It was a chimpanzee who had lived her whole life in captivity And in this post, she was being let out into, I think, a sanctuary. They opened the door. She was greeted by another chimpanzee, which immediately embraced her. She turned around and looked up at the sky and was completely in awe of the sky, the clouds. She was seeing them, apparently, for the first time. You could see her face literally light up. It was absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm skeptical in nature. So my first reaction is to second guess or maybe challenge if this video was real, especially how quickly a 15 second video can go viral, but the backstory is different than what we're actually seeing. Whether this video was real or not, it really got the wheels turning within my brain, within my head, and made me really pause and reflect and ask myself, Are there parts of my life, of my experience that are stopping me from being able to embrace this life with awe, with beauty and seeing it for what it is, a blessing? Now, this chimpanzee was put in a position where it was being held captive. That was the circumstances that it was either born into or that life brought it to that place. And as unfair as it was, or as unfair as it is, if that is truly the case, and that is truly the story, it still makes me reflect, are there parts of myself that are being held captive? As much as we think that we are free and fluid and flowing, how do we really know if we're not accustomed to anything other than our own captivity? It takes an open mind, an open heart, and open eyes to be able to see what you haven't been able to see before. And for that reason, I bring this question to you today. Are there things that you are being blinded away from? Are there, is there something that is covering your eyes and covering your third eye or covering your heart from being able to fully see and experience the blessing of this moment that is around you right now? How can you see something that you weren't trained to see or how can you see that you're living in a prison of yourself if this is all that it's ever been? Go to the divine and ask for that clarity and that inspiration so that things can change so that your eyes can be open and that you can now for the first time begin to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin diving into this astrological predictions and guidance If you feel called to, feel free to pause this podcast and sit with what it is that I said and maybe allow it to settle. If not, when you're ready, let's begin. So right now, the moon is currently making its way through Aquarius today. And when I say today, I mean Wednesday. Because like I said, it's July 4th weekend. I'm a little late on putting up the podcast. But better late than never is my new motto. And 
progress over perfection. As long as I'm showing up, that's all that I can ask of myself. And as you guys know, when I show up, I like to show up in full. So I'm going to give to the best of my capacity and my ability in this moment. So yeah, we are starting off on Wednesday today. At the time of me recording this podcast and sharing this message with you guys all today, it is Wednesday. It is the 5th. But, so we are in the middle of this week, but... This energy is still being being bled throughout the entirety of this week. And for that reason, I still want to dive deeply into this. So the moon is now making its way through the sign of Aquarius and will be almost immediately contacting the vertex point, the point of faded encounters and moments. The sun is moving through the sign of Cancer, who, as we know, is deeply emotive, deeply feeling, and one when it's triggered, it wants to move quickly into action in order to comfort, to nurture, to support. And the sun, now moving through the sign of cancer, is going to immediately meet with Mercury. And they're going to be sitting side by side at this cosmic table, having this deep conversation about feelings, about what happens next, about safety and security. The other planet that's standing out to me right now is Pluto, the planet of death and transformation, who now is currently retrograde and squaring off with the North Node, which has just recently entered into the sign of Taurus. Now, these transits alone will be moving us to great depths. They're going to be moving us deeply. Each of us individually is craving some sense of stability and safety in our rapidly changing environment. This may provoke certain questions this week that you're going to be asking yourself. You're going to be asking, you're going to be questioning your idea of security, whether it be your home, your finances, your future, your relationship, etc. The North Node will be pulling us into the direction that we need to now turn our eyes towards and walk towards, but the heart, the heart craves comfort, support, to be seen to truly connect and to have purpose. A few questions that may bubble up for you recently, and by recently I mean within the days of this week and the, and that which is going to come, can I trust myself? Can I trust this person? Does this situation feel safe or support me? Am I settling? Am I settling? What do I do now? Where am I going? For now, move through this week and give ample space to yourself, to others, and the situation. Giving space shouldn't trigger all of the things to fall apart. In fact, space is what allows the air to clear itself. It allows the light to reemerge and the dust to settle so that you can truly see and feel what needs to happen next. And while you take a time out, go deeper into yourself. I want to share with you words to help guide you through this because it can be very deeply triggering. Remember who you are. No one can take from you what is meant for you. If it falls away, it was never truly yours. You have the ability to create a new chapter in your life or begin a fresh chapter at any point. Is it really a total new start if you're carrying with you the wisdom and intelligence that you've learned in this lifetime but also the lifetimes before? It is not all or nothing. As magical beings and as spiritual spiritual practicing people, I want you to get used to the energy of the gray area. In all or nothing, it's not always all black and white. There's a lot of gray. And that gray is where magic really truly occurs. It's the part that you accept something for what it is without needing to change it, to pull at it, to manipulate it in any way, shape, or form. You see it for what it is. You realize that it's not all or nothing, that you yourself are not all or nothing. It's this in-between, this magical in-between of the, the blending and the merging of both of those extremes of that world. Something magical can be created 
through stillness and intention. Now, astrologically speaking, I want to remind you that Venus and Uranus are squaring off right now. Now, as temporary as this transit is, it will need to create dramatic and erupt departure in space for its medicine to truly take effect. Now, for this reason, take nothing personally and use this time to yourself or to reflect to your own advantage. What do you need to do for you? What does success look like for you? Not just in business and career goals, although those two are important, but also to be successful and fulfilled and accomplished within your personal goals, your relationships, and et cetera, et cetera, fill in the blank. I also see the potential here for massive and beautiful discovery within our charts. Jupiter is still transiting through Taurus, and although I've brought this up time and time before in the months prior, it's important for me to revisit this conversation now. This great benefactor is a generous provider, especially so now as the North Node is linking up in this sign and says, look here for the source of tremendous wealth. Earth magic is real, so work on connecting to source energy, feeling rooted to the abundance of the Earth. How can you actually relate to Earth energy right now? especially with these bombs being dropped in Taurus, Taurus magic. And the bombs, I mean Uranus transiting through Taurus. Jupiter transiting through Taurus. How can you relate to that? Do you feel abundant and thriving or drained and in need of replenishment and cool, calming waters, clear air, a rekindling of your passionate fires, or even rich nourishment? Start there. Start small. Take your time in that space and watch how as the more you fill your cup up, the more the energy around you unfolds and mirrors how you generously give to yourself. Now, I hope this message and I hope this astrology translation reached you and help you is giving helping to give you guidance and helping you set intention for where you're at right now. I'm setting intention that it allows you to feel empowered, that it reminds you again of who you are, that it gives some clarity into what exactly is happening around you. Take this time, of course, to reflect and bring it to the divine. What is the divine calling into your life right now? What is being actively shifting and evolving for you right now? What does that look like? And how can you bless that space? How can you set intention and protection and love and peace around this space? Actively call out for it now. I do want to invite you to subscribe to this podcast because there are plenty more interpretations of the astrology charts that are to come and it's always so wonderful and such a blessing to be able to pull the chart and translate it over for you as well as to share any additional channeled messages that I receive as I'm talking about them. So thank you guys once more for hanging out with me. I hope this message reached you with perfect divine timing and of course I will see you in the next one.